Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual open week. Today's session is going to go about the social sciences programs that are offered within the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences at Tilburg University. My name is Nadia van Strien, and together with our student, Manar, we're going to provide you with the insights about the programs and what you can actually expect from studying at Tilburg University uh, in the field of social sciences, of course. All right, let's get started. So basically, what does uh, social sciences study? It deals with the dynamics between politics, policy, and society. Sociology deals with, is, a, is a study uh, about the society, right? And you will understand the mechanisms that drive societal issues around the world, such as migration, poverty, inequality, exclusion, inclusion in society, and cultural differences. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, a couple of words about uh, the School of Social Sciences and where we actually are located. So the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences is one of the six schools of Tilburg University and it enjoys international rankings both in the Netherlands but also in Europe and worldwide. And the uh, School of Social Sciences as part of Tilburg University is located in the southern provinces uh, of the Netherlands in the, in the province of Brabant and this area um, is actually called as referred to as a brain port um, is sometimes proclaimed as the most innovative region in the world on top of the seaport in Amsterdam uh, in Rotterdam and the airport in Amsterdam brain port is a concentration of high-tech innovative companies but also we call it as a triple helix where a collaboration between the institutes, researchers, universities, companies and governments take place. Just to name you a few companies, big names that are based in, that have headquarters in, um, in the Brainport region um, are ASML, Philips, Tesla uh, and Duff and also Bosch. Um, but you can find out much more about it on the website. Uh, to begin with, um, I would like to uh, give you an example, actually, um, of different perspectives on one case study before I go uh, into the description of our bachelor's and master programs. And I, would, I found a case study on safety, and I would really like to illustrate the differences in um, uh, perspectives into one and same case study from different disciplines within the social sciences. All right, so maybe you have heard that uh, a couple of years ago there was a terrorist attack right after the concert of Ariana Grande at Manchester Arena. And after that, 22 people died and about 59 people got injured. So how do psychology sociologists and people who, students who uh, follow the Global Management of Social Issues program tackle such a case study? So from a psychologist point of view, you will actually be analyzing people's behavior and how does that actually affect people, their mindset. And um, uh, from the point of view of a victim, you will be studying um, st uh, rehabilitation after stress issues, for example. From the point of view of an offender, you will look into uh, the reasons why would somebody uh, create such an appalling attack or even commit a suicide afterwards. Uh, from the point of view of sociology, you will actually study what effects does the social media announcement about the event have um, on public, on broader public. It can be positive effect, but also negative effect. Um, and you will be, uh, um, as a positive effect, well, positive, uh, you will see that uh, people become more aware of such like uh, happenings and as a negative event people might probably consider never to attend or uh, not to attend um, concerts or uh, events where a lot of people are involved shortly after the attack. And as a student of Global Management of Social Issues Bachelor, uh, would uh, rather study um, uh, terrorism as an ultimate wicked problem. What is a wicked problem is a complex societal challenge that affects uh, every one of us at a global scale and is very difficult to be solved and probably has no clear-cut ready solution. 
Um, this case study is not really being discussed at the moment within the GMSI Global Management of Social Issues Bachelor yet, but this is just an example for you to have an idea of uh, the discussions and class that students might have. All right, so let's move on. Um, I would like to uh, point out a few unique selling points and features of our bachelor and master programs. Um, so for the bachelor programs, all students have this chance of um, uh, doing a mobility window within their third year, so they can either do an internship or uh, study abroad at a partner university, follow a minor either at Tilburg University or at any other Dutch university that is related to their field of expertise or research. Um, and they do it without any study delay. So they get um, credit points awarded after the mobility window and they do not graduate with a delay. Um, so that's all incorporated within their diploma, within their course. Uh, so master students have um, some extra um, options to, uh, to stand out at the labor market that they can consider while uh, applying and following their masters here in Tilburg. Uh, so first of all, um, at Tilburg University we offer three different double degrees within this field of study and I will speak about them in a moment. Uh, what is a double degree is actually a joint diploma that is offered by two or more universities um, that are based in two or more different countries and after graduation students actually uh, get two different diplomas. Um, both diplomas are accredited and um, that they are uh, accepted worldwide uh, and students have a unique opportunity to follow uh, courses in different countries, uh, have an experience, an academic and intercultural experience and um, so this is a nice um, extra uh, added value to a regular master degree. Next to that, we also have extended master programs um, that you can apply for uh, right after the beginning of your master. And uh, you extend your master by half a year. And within that um, a year and a half in total, you will be following a supervised traineeship of one year. Um, all right, and then the last feature is that you can even combine uh, a double degree and an extended master within your masters. So then um, the, the duration will be a bit longer, but you'll get a fantastic uh, outcome after graduation. And that opened many doors uh, for you on the labor market and in the academia, of course. All right, so what are the bachelor and master programs um, uh, uh, we have in this field? Uh, so as to bachelor programs, we offer international sociology undergraduate program and global management of social issues. Um, both bachelors and actually all bachelors in Tilburg University uh, are three years long. And um, next to that, we have a few master programs. Um, one year long, we have research master program, two year long, um, that gives direct access to PhD tracks. And if you're really into research and um, into academia, uh, academic career, then you could consider that one. And we also have double degrees, as I mentioned before. And combinations are possible. All right, so uh, let me first start off uh, by introducing the Bachelor in International Sociology. So sociology is actually a study about society, about the dynamics between um, groups of people, between individuals in society. And as a sociology student, you will be dealing with uh, different uh, case studies and you'll be analyzing uh, problems such as or phenomena, such as cohesion, uh, exclusion, inclusion within the society, intercultural um, differences, and uh, you'll also be uh, analyzing poverty, inequality. Um, so this is a multidisciplinary study, because uh, you will also be dealing with some political sciences um, uh, elements within your course, psychology, economics, and philosophy. Um, all right, so there are also two majors offered within this course. And um, our student, as I already promised you, will um, share her insights about that in a few moments. All right. And the 
program is actually quite a small scale program. Uh, we have uh, quite an international classroom, so you will have plenty of opportunities to uh, do team assignments, but also uh, take part in debates and discussions with students coming from different academic and intercultural backgrounds. Just to give you an example, um, what are the questions the students will be dealing with in this course? For example, why do people actually commit a crime? And how to handle a refugee crisis? Why is populism on the rise? And is uh, cultural diversity a, a curse sorry, or a blessing? So you will be analyzing these uh, real life social phenomena in the modern world and uh, you will be taking examples from real world, of course. Um, all right, and um, the majors uh, that we offer within this course uh, are listed uh, at the bottom of the slide. All right, now let me first um, uh, introduce you to our second bachelor in the field of, uh, that is called Global Management of Social Issues. And, um, well, this is a complex title, Global Management of Social Issues, but it's actually a program that is dealing with the so-called wicked problems, the global complex societal challenges that affect the world and that have no ready-made solution. So the students will be dealing uh, with uh, problems such as sustainable development, uh, global warming, uh, poverty, inequality, and they will be analyzing it from different academic disciplines, which are human resource studies, organization studies, and sociology. All students have the possibility to do an internship, to study abroad or follow a minor specialization within their mobility window um, uh, track in their third academic year. I must say that this course is uh, rather unique in the Netherlands and that 60% uh, of the students are, come from different academic and cultural backgrounds and that makes it um, an extra exciting course uh, where you can really explore different perspectives on the same subject matters from students coming from different environments. All right, so yeah, as I already said, uh, you would focus on poverty, inequality, climate change, refugee crisis. Um, it has a very strong international perspective and uh, students uh, have uh, simulation exercises uh, on humanitarian disaster, for example, or they uh, gain project management skills, they have study trips and they really love it. Um, they have a very strong community. They have trips to the headquarters of NATO, for example, to the European Commission or to the International Court of Justice. All right, so, um, so far so good with the undergraduate programs. Now let's move on to the postgraduate programs that we offer in this field. So first of all, I'd like to mention the Research Master Program in Social and Behavioral Sciences. This is a a two-year program, as I said, with a focus on research and uh, it has a combination of the social and behavioral sciences uh, approaches and is uh, unique and number one in the Netherlands. So um, this course is um, has a fantastic opportunity for you uh, because uh, on top of the courses that you follow, you also have uh, four in-house traineeships and a research um, intern traineeship. So uh, basically, um, during your course, you complete the courses, you have five traineeship experiences and uh, you write your thesis. Um, all right, the classes are rather small and um, you have uh, contact with professors and you have excellent academic guidance. Okay, so um, within this course you will be dealing with three different uh, social sciences perspectives such as social psychology, sociology and organization studies. Um, these are the main elements of the course and as of the second year you will also have a possibility to choose one of the three minors. So you can either focus on the methodology and statistics if you have very, ha have very strong analytical skills or on social psychology uh, or the third minor is social sciences that have uh, two focuses or subtracts um, 
on sociology and organization studies. I'd like to emphasize that for more information and details and inspiration and uh, promotional videos, please do navigate to our website and explore it and find out more about each course in particular. All right, the next master I'd like to cover is a master in sociology. So this is a one-year master course, is a small-scale course, uh, has a very international environment, and the main focus is on politics, policy, and society in comparative perspectives. So you will study policy making, and um, the courses that you're going to get are on politics and society, uh, social capital, networks, research, um, and attitudes, and also social policy and social roles. All right, so it's, it's a very societally, uh, society-oriented uh, program, and the questions that you're going to be answering uh, are, how does internet use affect our social network, for example, or how can we explain the rise of radical right parties? Okay. There are also policy-oriented elements, and you will be asking questions like, how do different policies shape individual behavior? And it has a research-oriented aspect. Um, so, of course, at the end of the master track, you will be writing your master thesis, and um, you will have more advanced statistics courses. All right. So the next master I would like to mention is on health, well-being, and society. And uh, it's a one-year master, also small scale, and also has an international um, flair, let's say. So um, within this master, you will be studying how the policies and models for well-being uh, from a societal perspective are being done. And uh, you will uh, have a combination of two approaches from sociology and health sciences. Uh, you will be, uh, we have a very strong collaboration with healthcare organizations here in the Netherlands. You will obviously have community building activities. Uh, there will be guest speakers coming to uh, class. There will be simula simulation exercises, serious big gaming, study trips, and whatnot. Okay. And within this master, you will be uh, studying differences in health and well-being uh, in different contexts, and also the differences of welfare and healthcare policies for different groups of people. So you will be uh, studying politics, policies, and um, all that connected to the well-being and healthcare. All right. So also with an international perspective. And on top of this, you could consider doing an extended master, and I will uh, tell about it in a few moments. All right. So uh, now I would like to mention uh, three specializations uh, within the global management uh, of social sciences field. Uh, so one of them um, is uh, dealing with global societal challenges that I already mentioned several times, poverty, inequality, um, sustainability, um, from the politics and policy perspective, so, so from the sociological macro perspective, okay? Um, then this is uh, the first track within this field. The second track is more uh, dealing with a meso perspective on global societal challenges from an organizational studies field. Um, and the last one, people management track of global social challenges, uh, is obviously dealing with global social challenges from the HR perspective. Okay, so that is a, like a micro perspective um, to uh, the wicked problems. And you will have community building activities. Uh, you will have also uh, a few common courses. So do not think that you will be uh, in a small classroom throughout uh, the whole study period. Uh, all students who, are, who have chosen uh, one of these three tracks will also have uh, common courses and they can share their insights um, during the discussion that, that is a great advantage to the course. Okay, let's move on. 
So um, a little bit more about the specialization. Um, you will uh, be studying um, a viewpoint of, uh, of policy making. If you choose the policy and politics uh, track, you will look from the point of your organizations, how they are being managed and, and um, uh, improved, let's say, and structured from the organization perspective. And finally, from the HR perspective, you will be focusing on the workforce on the labor market. Okay, as I promised you earlier, let's now talk about the double degree masters that you can um, do on top of your master degree. So at the end of the day, um, if you choose sociology and social research double degree, um, you will be uh, uh, studying two years, so one year uh, per university, and then at the end you will get two diplomas. So this double degree is uh, run uh, by the University of Trento in Italy and by Tilburg University. Um, and um, please also uh, do not forget that you would need to apply for this double degree yourself, either before the studies or right after the beginning of your master studies and make sure that you are fully aware uh, of the application requirements per each track. Okay, they're all on the website. The next double degree is on sociology is offered with Bamberg University in Germany. It's a two-year program, so one year uh, you spend one year at each of the universities, and then you focus on the empirical social research, education, labor market, and inequality, and so on. And the last double degree that we have is offered together with uh, University Pompeu Fabra, our great partner in Barcelona, Spain, and the duration is one and a half years. Uh, all right, so um, uh, to summarize everything and emphasize once again, you can, ex uh, you can add an extended master to your double degree, so basically you can combine both. Of course, the duration of your study will be a little bit extended, but what do you get um, afterwards is worth doing it, because then you will, be, you will have amazing chances uh, at the labor market. Um, so uh, we also offer external and international uh, vacancies or so job positions uh, at Tilburg, but we also have great contacts here in the area. Uh, you do not need to speak Dutch because we also have international English um, spoken uh, tr uh, vacancies. And um, so those are the unique opportunities that you can con could consider. Um, so you can do just a master, uh, you can do a research master or you can do a master, top it up with extended master and even add a double degree to it. Sounds great, right? <laughs> All right, so the extended master, um, those are a few examples on the right side of the slide of the, of the employers uh, where our graduates are currently uh, working. And um, so the 50% of your time of your extended master uh, you will be doing research projects and then uh, the remaining 50% you will be uh, doing your uh, master thesis. All right, um, so you can uh, find out more about uh, all these opportunities on the website. And uh, one more thing to mention, um, I've just given you a, br a, a brief introduction to the programs that we have but probably it makes sense for you to also have a look at other bachelor and master programs that are in one way or another related to this field, academic field, and maybe you will find something interesting for you. So you can just navigate to the website and you can look into the main focus areas, but also into the course offer that are offered by these uh, bachelor and master programs. Before I move to the admission and application slide, one of the last ones, uh, I'm happy to introduce you to our student, Manar. Uh, so, hi Manar, good hi. to see you, hi. <laughs> so, Manar is a second year, right? Yeah. Second year sociology student. Um, so, um, how do you experience the program and how, why did you actually choose to study international sociology at Tilburg University out of all other options, of course? <laughs> Um, well, uh, firstly, I had a few friends who were studying psychology mm -hmm. already at Tilburg University, so that's how I knew about the university. Uh, that's the first uh, point of 
knowing about it. They and were studying um, psychology at Tilburg? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. um, so that's how I knew about Tilburg University. And mm -hmm. then, um, well, psychology was interesting to me, but I decided to go with sociology because psychology is very much individual centered and mm -hmm. sociology is a lot more about society and groups and so forth. And I thought mm -hmm. that that was a lot more interesting to me. And mm -hmm. that is the reason why I uh, decided to study international sociology. Okay, nice. And how do you experience it so far? Uh, so far, so good, thankfully, okay. you know. Okay. Um, there's not really any reason to be complaining or anything of that mm -hmm. sort. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an international classroom. Mm -hmm. the it's taught in English, so I don't have to worry about any Dutch, mm -hmm. um, you know. And you're exposed to sociology from the beginning, so mm -hmm. you get uh, the historical uh, part of sociology, how did it start, and then mm -hmm. you start going into actually dealing with uh, real life issues. Mm -hmm, nice. And so um, how does your um, week look like in general? Just give me an example. <laughs> um, I would say that it really depends, uh, of course, uh, because uh, the year is divided into four blocks. Uh, right. So basically per block, sometimes you're a bit more busy than others. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, you're never too busy to do anything else in your life, I would mm -hmm. say, as obviously this depends on if you're well organized and um, you know, it depends mm -hmm. on the student, but I would say that you definitely um, do whatever it is that you want on mm -hmm. the side of your study. Mm -hmm. So I would say that my weeks are never too busy. You know, you have like class usually around the mm -hmm. afternoon time, so I don't have to get up early most of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just one or two classes in a day. So it's mm -hmm. not like an entire day where you just come home super tired, you mm -hmm. know? There's time to wake up fresh mm -hmm. and then go to bed fresh. Fantastic. And uh, would you compare your, um, uh, well, study week to a full 40 hours working week? Um, no, definitely not. not. Okay. It's not like that. I would definitely say that uh, I'm a bit scared to have to start working mm -hmm. because of the how working is and how it's set up. I would say that it's studying in a good way in the sense that you have time. I would compare it to someone who works both at work and at home. Okay. So you have the time to work at home when you need to mm -hmm. and relax yourself. So I would say it's more close to that. Oh, okay, so sounds like a healthy balance then. Yes. Oh, okay. And what are your favorite subjects? Um, I would say that uh, in my first year, my favorite subject was definitely sociological themes. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a subject where we, as the name says, we dealt with different sociological themes. So mm -hmm. we spoke about migration, we spoke about gender, you mm -hmm. know, so many different uh, things. Uh, it was basically sort of like a pre-introduction mm -hmm. so that we could do our research on one of these related topic right. areas. Mm -hmm. And it also was a way for you to choose your major decision, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. So I'm mm -hmm. currently in the culture and a comparative perspective major. Mm -hmm. And I would say that so far, my favorite subject is cultural sociology, which mm -hmm. teaches you about the importance of culture as um, part of what you're studying. So instead of just studying everything uh, based on um, other factors, culture is a very important factor in why people behave the way they behave. Mm -hmm. So I would say mm -hmm. those are two subjects that I really very much enjoyed mm -hmm. because the professors were both really uh, good professors mm -hmm. and the course uh, information was very interesting. Mm, sounds good. Mm -hmm. And um, so regarding the mobility window, because uh, all students have this opportunity, um, you guys, you need to take an internship, a compulsory internship within the sociology bachelor. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Uh, well, uh, essentially, yes. So mm -hmm. in the sense that in our mobility window, we can either go on an exchange or do mm -hmm. a minor or do an internship. Mm -hmm. uh, for the internship, it's compulsory in the sense that if you decide not to do it, you would basically have to replace the credits with other courses. Right. And you have to get these uh, courses approved. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you are not interested in doing an internship, you must do it no matter what. There is still an right. option to take courses instead if you would prefer doing that. Mm -hmm. um, plus the internship is broad. So if you want to work with an, uh, in, within academia, you can do mm -hmm. an internship there, the university. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also do your internship while you're abroad. If mm -hmm. you decide to go on an exchange, you can combine both of them. So mm -hmm. basically, it's a very flexible moment for you to do just about whatever you want. Okay. F okay, amazing. <laughs> and uh, so, Manar, you are in your second year. Um, your third year is approaching. And what's next? Um, well, uh, so after, during my third year, I plan on going to exchange in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, then after my third year, uh, I plan, I'm more interested in research, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that I would like to go uh, into a research master's. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've looked at the one at Tilburg University, mm -hmm. for example, of course, because, well, why else? Uh, but yeah, I looked into that and I would think I would like to go into research. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the most interesting path for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And maybe into PhD uh, yeah, thereafter. Th uh -huh. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's my plan so far. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your insights. Mm -hmm. And um, the time is running out and we have to wrap up. And uh, therefore, my uh, before last slide is about the admission and application requirements. And for the bachelor students, if you are a, a student of a European country uh, and you are going to get your high school diploma, you are directly eligible to apply for our bachelor programs. You would need to take an English test unless you are an, a German student doing an Abitur diploma uh, with English as your final exam, um, or if you're a native speaker, of course, and you studied uh, at a native uh, English-speaking country, or you did your full IB diploma or A-levels, you do not need to take the test. Um, on top of that, you would need to uh, prove that you have sufficient math level. What do I mean by that? It's rather individual, but in general, if you've had mathematics throughout your high school and took a final exam in math, then you will be fine. If we notice that there is deficiency in mathematics, then we invite you to take an extra course on top of your first year courses, uh, usually in the first semester, you would need to take this uh, course and pass it successfully. And don't worry, we have uh, good academic guidance in place and we will help you if anything. And uh, you would also need to write a motivation letter after which we will invite you for an interview just uh, to meet you and just to make sure that there is a good match between your expectations and what we actually offer. Uh, so that is like an extra check uh, for both of us. And uh, yes, uh, speaking about the master programs, uh, we usually look for a bachelor degree in a related field uh, to social sciences, whatever you will choose. And we ask you to upload your diploma with your full transcript. Um, the English language test is obviously required, a motivation letter. Uh, we have an online statistics checklist. and. Guys, we have a great news. We do not require GMAT or GRE for the social sciences uh, masters. Uh, if you're into research master uh, programs, we have some extra documents such as uh, course descriptions and uh, thesis, academic paper, essay, or an article. That's pretty much it. So thank you very much for your attention. And I do hope that this session was helpful. And um, in case you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us, to type in your questions in the live uh, Q&A session. My colleagues and I will be happy to help you. You can also type your questions at the bottom right uh, side of the screen. You can also download your Tilburg University personalized brochure. Uh, you can email us or better come and visit our campus and meet us and we will show you around and we'll definitely not disappoint you. So thank you very much for your attention. And goodbye.